Hey guys, welcome back Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to talk about um, something that's kind of a pet peeve of mine, and that's when a fastener doesn't have the right torque holding ability for its intended purpose. Now what I'm getting at are the fasteners that are used in old muscle car uh, sway bars. The reason is these fasteners are actually drilled and tapped into one eighth inch steel. How is that supposed to hold the torque required for modern day sway bars and chassis braces. Now fine, back in the day, I'm sure this is how it went down. Bob and in the machine shop in the factory went, hey, Joe, uh, I don't think they welded in nuts for these sway bars, what do we do? Well, Bob, I think we just drill and tap it and just pray that no one tightens them. <laughs> I don't know, can you imagine? Yeah, so back in the day we had some flimsy sway bars, but now we're upgrading our stuff with bigger sway bars, chassis braces. I would think that you would want some more torque holding ability on those fasteners. And the reason I say this is that episode I put this brace in, I might have stripped one of those holes. And I think a couple of you guys had asked or come up with a solution uh, to fix that problem, or you're working on your car and it's rusted in there and you went to get it out and you ruined the thread. So now what? Well, there's a couple, couple things we can do there. One, you can drill and tap for the next larger screw. I believe it's a 5 16 that's in there. You can drill and tap to 3 8 um, Or you can snake a nut down in the frame and Pray that you never after, ever, ever have to remove it again because as soon as you do that, that nut's going to want to move down the frame. Um, but plan three or plan C that you guys came up with, why not try using a rivet nut? And we can maybe put a bigger fastener in. So I think today's goal is just to do some torque testing on what the stock fastener can hold, what a 3 8 can hold, what these guys can hold in different sizes, and then come up with a method to apply that higher load technique to our more modern suspension system. So let's go hit the drawing board, and yes, there's gonna be some math today, guys. So let's check it out. Okay, I should have warned you. We're gonna play with numbers today. So I went ahead and pulled the fastener on my current sway bar. This is stock. Um, hole size which is a 5 16 18 threads per inch and then i went ahead and went one size bigger this is a 3 8 16 threads per inch and this plate thickness is a hundred thousandths the frame thickness i measured it right here is 125 thousandths the difference is 25 thousandths that is 25 thousandths it's basically almost the thickness of my fingernail. So you can guys get an idea that our torque testing here will be a really good application for you guys to know how much force you can put on a standard fitting and how much force we can put on if we went a little bit bigger. And obviously later in the video, we're gonna put our thread certs in here and test those as well. So starting things out, the 100,000th thickness the rule of thumb in engineering land is for steel is to have at least the same diameter of the fastener as depth in, in thread. And the proof there is actually if you get the matching nut, check that out. It's like the same thickness, right, as the OD. Same thing with the smaller one. So if you compare that with our piece of metal or our frame it's dramatically different and as we can probably prove when we torque test this um, we will see that difference so i'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the vise and uh, let's see what kind of measurements we get i'm starting with 15 inch pounds so let's see what happens here and i couldn't even do that i already stripped it wow crazy let me take this out Right, just an observation, you can see all this stuff came off of my fingers and this surface is raised up. So we successfully pulled that thread. This one's nice and level. So I'm going to switch over here. Our threads on the fastener are still good. So it's definitely the plate that's stripped, which is a common theme in our cars. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same bolt for kicks and giggles. 13. Fourteen. Oh, oh, yep. 
14. So 13's the max. Man, how crazy is that? Yes, okay, so I wrote it down. I also wrote it down on our sheet, but um, 12 is the last passing torque. 13 it failed. So we're gonna pick up where we left off with 13 on our 3 8 And that doesn't work either. How crazy is that? That's very interesting. Let's go back to our sheet and talk about that. Okay, so 13 also failed with our 3 8 inch fastener. Now here's my theory. The thread length, the pitch between the thread is bigger than the 18 thread. So 0 0.055. So 55 thousandths is our 5 16 pitch. 63 thousandths is the pitch for our 3 8 That's the measurement from here to here, peak to peak. So that means there's actually less thread engagement for the hundred thousandths of material. That explains that. So if you're in a bind, you strip your uh, 5 16 18 thread. You can step up to 3 8 16, but you cannot use the same uh, more torque. You have to use the same torque or maybe even less. So on this next round, I'm going to drop down the torque and see if we can uh, see what the limit is. I'm guessing it's around 10. Okay, there's 10. We got 10. Let's try 12. Yep, got 12. Okay, here's 13. Nope, can't do it. Wow, it's the same. Here's the kit I got on Amazon. That's the company name. I'll leave a part number below for what I ordered. You guys can order the same thing, but it comes with all these sizes, uh, metric and empirical. The empirical sizes start at one half 13 and go all the way down to a 1024. There's three bins that are empty over here. That's 1032, 832, and 642. I can't, I can't read it, but they sell those too. So I bought the three remaining sizes. So there are three more arbors and more inserts I can put in here. So for future projects, I think I'm going to dig this thing. Now, what we're going to do is now that we've done our torque test on the plain sheet metal, I'm going to do the same test with the 5 16 18 and the 3 8 16, but now I'm curious. I'm wondering if we can do uh, the quarter 20 and just to see what happens. Now in the instructions, there is a chart that shows most importantly, what drill size to use. Now I was about to go through the math to figure out the empirical sizes because these are all metric. And I said, hell with it. I'm just gonna buy the metric drill drill bit. So that's what I did. I bought all these drill bit sizes and I'm gonna keep those drill bits with this case at all times. So I don't have to go hunting for drill bits because I can't stand when that happens, right? So I'm gonna get to work, make some new holes in that uh, our piece of sheet metal and we'll get to more testing. All right, here's the before picture. I wanted to show you guys, you need some depth behind whatever you're working with, duh. But I'm gonna go ahead and Start with the smallest one. It should be the easiest, I'm guessing, but uh, here we go. Okay, let's see this work. Yeah, I feel it getting bigger. One down, two to go. Before we torque test it, I want you to see what it looks like. So on the top, there is an elevation change, as you can see that, that lip. And obviously on the back side, it compressed that rivet. So it's squeezing, pinching the metal in between basically both flanges, the flange we made and the existing flange. Now the challenge here I need to think about is I need to get something to match the elevation or like a washer um, just to keep, I wanna see if the fastener What's going to fail first? Is this going to pull the rivet through the hole or is the fastener or the threads going to fail in there? 
My guess is going to pull the rivet through, but that's what experimenting is all about. Let's give it a shot. Okay, mad scientist at it again. I found a washer that fits around and higher than that lip. Another hardened washer that fits over that hole. And our quarter 20 fastener. So what do you think? Should we start at 13 pounds? Yeah, I agree. We got there, baby. That's too funny. I cannot get the socket on that thin head. So I say it's a success at 20, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and jump up to that 3 8 the um, 5 16 screw, sorry, the 5 16 is next. So of course the washer I have that fits that hole and gets us above elevation. Poor planning. Ah. So plan B, I did this before with pulling my uh, pins out of my block. So we're going to do that and that. So we're, we're clearly around that flange. Feels like a magic trick, doesn't it? I have a long socket head cap screw with another washer. And now we can do our torque test. Gosh, what do you think is going to yield first? All right, creeping up on it. And come on, come on, come on. Oh, this doesn't make sense. Oh, no, something's loosening up. Uh, okay, something failed. Yanked it right on through and even deformed the metal around there. So that's kind of what we thought was going to happen here. All right, all right. Learning experience. Good to know, good to know. Let's try this one with direct contact on that flange and see if we can get um, some torque results without breaking anything. All right, 30. Got to 30. 40? Let's see. Oh, we got it. 40. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know we got to try 50 now. Here we go. Oh my God, we got to 50. Woo! 60? How far can we take this? Well, it's got to be stripped now. Yeah, it just got looser. So there's the destruction of that thread. We actually took the thread out of the insert. Are you guys thoroughly confused yet? Yeah, me too. Now let's do a little summary because I jumped ahead and I didn't film it, but this was our socket test where we were pulling without a direct mount flange. We successfully got to 20, 25 pounds broke that. So these are all passing grades. We did a direct mount on the 3 8 inch screw and it passed 50 pounds 60 pounds broke that thread right now i wanted to go ahead and do a direct mount version of the 5 16 and i decided to drill out the currently tapped hole to mimic what we have in the frame came out great and it passed with 25 pounds 30 pounds broke that thread now what we haven't tested yet is the 3 8 inch screw non-direct mount so let's see what it pulls through the reason i want to do this guys is that the bracketry in our car does not perfectly cover the flange and we have and again i think it's gonna be another video because um there's a lot going on in the car but we are testing how much torque can these inserts hold so mimicking the same hole that's in our frame now i'm going to drill that out with a half inch bit because that's happens to be the size that this insert uses and that everyone has a half inch bit at home so it's a good example and all these i've been doing with the drill press i'm going to do the hand drill on this one again to mimic the car and we will do the non-direct mount test when i'm done very nice you can also use one of these bits that makes it handy because you can also deburr that edge so i'm going to go ahead and do that i tape the next level up so i know where to stop Nice. Okay, a little update. This doesn't fit still. And um, I just compared the math and the chart and the chart is wrong. It's not a 12.9 millimeter drill bit. You gotta be kidding me, this is typical. So I have a different bit here 
And this one has a 35 64 which is slightly bigger than this OD. So I'm gonna give that a shot. I also ordered a 17 32nd drill bit with a 3 8 inch shank. So I'll have that tomorrow if this one doesn't work. Jesus. Hey yo, it's a little sloppy though. So uh, we'll try that other drill bit when I get it. But that should work, work, be a good experiment anyway, right guys? Okay, I did the same test. I didn't want to bore you guys with my socket trick and 35 pounds failed. That's why there's a line through it. So 30 pounds passed. But clearly what we need to pursue is some kind of orientation where we can load that outer flange. What I prefer to do is have that whole flange covered. So depending where you put this, so if you go here, yeah, you have three quarters of it, but then we still have some exposed flange, but this, the good news is this is a three eighths inch rivet nut and three eighths inch bolt fits fine on this bracket, which I am pretty sure is going to be universal amongst all the sway bar companies and even the old school brackets. So in a bind, you can use those nut certs to, um, fix your strip thread in your frame and use your standard bracket. Now, I'm not comfortable with that yet, and here's why. That UMI brace is has bigger holes than those brackets, and it barely covers the surface area on the, on the biggest uh, nut cert that we were using, which is the 3 8 um, So that means next episode, I'm gonna come up with a way, and we're gonna test it first for it in the car, uh, to adequately support a higher torque on those fasteners and then we'll implement it in the car so it's going to be fun so subscribe if you haven't and we'll take it from there but you guys know the drill build them fast drive them faster see ya